Hello everyone and welcome to another review. This time we are going to be reviewing the science fiction film Terminus that came out in 2015. It is directed by Mark Fumi, stars Todd Lassans, Kendra Appleton and Jay Coutre. When this film came out it flew under the radar. It doesn't play like a typical sci-fi film but that's its charm. Well let's get right into it. When the film begins, a couple of government agents show up at this couple's trailer and begin questioning them about what they saw. Now, they realize that the man used to be blind and whatever he came in contact with seemed to have cured his blindness. And while they didn't find any specimens that they could take with them, they apparently took the man with them. You don't find that out until later in the film, but they do take him with them. It cuts to David Chamberlain, who's played by Jay Coutre, who's at his wife's graveside talking to her. He then goes to work and he works at a auto repair shop and it seems that the owner is about to shut down the place and declare bankruptcy. As he's leaving to pick up the last car, he meets Zach, who's played by Todd Lassans who comes asking for a job. Meanwhile, in the background, on the radio and on the TV, you hear that the US is in a war in Iran and that the Russians and the Chinese are warning the US. So Zach and David end up at the same bar drinking later that night. Now, while they're there, Zach gets into a verbal argument with another guy and he and the guy take it outside to settle it and David follows them to help Zach out. And of course, Zach and David end up getting their butts kicked because it's like five or six against the two of them. Anyway, they only stop fighting when the people realize that Zach only has one leg and they accidentally pulled off his prosthetic leg. So in the meanwhile, in the bar, the TV is going and you can hear that things are deteriorating on the world stage, that they are uh, getting bad between the US, Iran and Russia. When he gets home that night, he finds that his daughter Annabelle, who is played by Kendra Appleton, is home from college. After she goes to bed, he goes out to get himself some more booze and on his way back, he sees a meteorite right over his car that causes him to lose control and roll over into a ditch. When he doesn't come home the next morning, Annabelle goes looking for him. She finds him and takes him to the hospital. And at the hospital, they inform her that although he had given one of his kidneys to his wife, he now has two perfectly functioning kidneys. Anyway, he gets home and he begins to remember that he did get in contact with the meteorite. Meanwhile, on the television in the background, you hear that Russia, China, and France are warning the US and Israel to back down, which the US and Israel are not backing down. And while that's going on, David is having visions of his dead wife who is bringing him a message. It seems as if whoever sent the asteroid is giving David a message and giving him plans to build a device and they are warning him that he must build a device soon to save his daughter's life. Meanwhile, you, we find out that the two government agents are being chewed out by their boss because he had ordered them to leave and drop this investigation and which they have not done and he feels they have more important things to do going on with this war so after he leaves you find out that the two agents still have the man from the beginning of the movie who was blind but now can see and they're planning to experiment on him to find out why he's able to see even though it's going to kill him then David goes and gets Zach to help him get the meteorite and bring it to his barn. 
Meanwhile, in the background on the TV, you hear that the Chinese are sending battleships into the Persian Gulf. So things are escalating. While that's going on, Zach, whose brief contact with the meteorite has caused him pain in his amputated leg, when he looks at it, it's beginning to grow. While that's happening, the two agents have gotten orders from their boss that they must leave by 8 o'clock in the morning, and they refuse, so they essentially have gone rogue. Meanwhile, Zach, who is now in pain, goes over to David to find out what's, what the hell happened, what's going on. And David and Annabelle put him in contact with the asteroid, and his leg begins to heal even faster until he has two perfectly good legs. Zach and David go to the local junkyard and steal the materials they need to build the device. The next morning, while Zach and David are working, the agents meet up with the sheriff who informs them that David was in a car accident and came out without a scratch. That turns the agents on to David and they begin following him all over the place. While they're doing that, he gives them the slip and him and Zach are able to go and complete the device and David was taking a rest. While he's doing that, the agents get frustrated and then they went and kidnapped Zach and Annabelle and are holding them at David's house. David gets a warning from his wife that his time is up and he needs to go and get Zach and Annabelle and bring them to safety. Meanwhile, at the house, the agents are beginning to beat up Zach. And in the background on the TV, you hear that a nuclear missile of Russian origin just hit the main American military base in the Middle East, killing everyone, and that the U.S. have gone to DEFCON 1. Well, David comes and he's able to rescue Zach and Annabelle, but as they're running away, the agents shoot Annabelle in the back. Zach and David take a very badly injured Annabelle to the device which is located in a warehouse. The device is actually a giant cement mixer with armor plating on the outside. They have put the meteorite on the inside and out of the meteorite comes vines that has covered the entire inside of the mixer. Anyway, they place Annabelle in there and while they're doing that, the agents who are following them come and a shootout breaks out between Zack and the agents, in which several of the agents are killed and Zack is wounded. David gets Zack into the device and he closes the door. While that's happening, the bombs begin to fall. And as the bombs are falling, you see a shot of Annabelle and Zack in the device and there's liquid slowly filling it. You see them freeze, apparently in a cryogenic state. Then the bombs continue to fall. People come out of their houses and watch their world end. And we assume thousands of years go by or hundreds, who knows. Then the liquid begins to drain out. The door of the device opens up and Annabelle and Zach looks out into the sunshine and you see a shot of the outside where the cement mixer is all rusted and there is vegetation growing on it. And obviously thousands, maybe hundreds, thousands, who knows, of years have passed. And that's how the movie ended. The thing about this movie is the events happening on the world stage. You know, that's kind of how it would happen. You'd be minding your own business, watching TV, and just see things getting worse and worse on the news or the radio or whatever and you'll be able to do anything about it anyway also in this movie they never tell you who sent the meteorite i mean it had to be somebody intelligent from the way the movie is structured anyway it's a movie i think that people would enjoy so i want to thank you for watching and listening